Hello, I'm Bill Faulkner, and welcome to the SMRT Safety Video Podcast Series for MR Safety Week 2017. Now, this, is, this is video number four in our series of five videos. And in this particular video podcast, we're going to be looking at MRI in patients with implants and devices. Now, I realize we've discussed patient screening in the first video podcast of this series, but I really want to reiterate how important your screening policies and procedures and the form that you use, how important these are to the overall safety of patients that are undergoing an MRI exam. It's important to make sure your form is very thorough and comprehensive, very much like the sample you see here from MRISafety.com, which is, of course, freely downloadable. And I understand it's also available in several languages. You really want to resist any type of pressure to simplify this form. If you make it shorter, you do that by just leaving off stuff off the form. And if you do that, you just increase the risk that something's going to be missed. Also, remember that all patients are to be completely screened prior to each and every MRI by trained individuals. And we discussed this in the first video. Also, at least one of those screenings should be by level two personnel. And in the first video, I mentioned several reasons why I personally feel that a verbal and interactive screening performed by the technologist or the radiographer is very important with regard to safety. And also remember that successfully having undergone an MRI procedure in the past is not an indication that a patient may undergo a future procedure safely. Simply don't take shortcuts with the MRI screening procedure, particularly under the guise of making it more convenient for the patient or even worse for throughput. So when we have an MRI patient with an implant or device, the first thing we need to determine is, does the device have proper MRI labeling? Now, the labeling and the definition of this labeling is defined by an ASTM standard and is utilized by both the FDA and the IEC. The labeling terms are MRI safe, MR unsafe, and MR conditional. Notice that MR compatible is not one of them. It's really important that we in MRI stop using that undefined term of MR compatible to describe implants or devices. Now, MRI safe means that an item has been shown to pose no known hazards resulting from an exposure to any MRI environment. For example, wood, glass, plastic, something like that. It's also important to know that any item that is metallic, magnetic, or electrically activated is never going to be labeled as MR safe. So we need to stop referring to devices such as pacemakers and ICDs, which have MR labeling as safe. And MR unsafe is pretty straightforward. It's an item that poses unacceptable risk to the patient, medical staff, or other persons within the MRI environment. So that pretty much says everything we need to know. Now, MR conditional is the labeling that's going to be applied to an item that has been tested and has been demonstrated that it is safe in the MRI environment within defined conditions. And that's a very important component of this labeling, safe within defined conditions. So 
let's look at the process we should go through in patients with implants or devices. First, we've got to identify the device. And by that, I mean we've got to know the name of the device, the uh, manufacturer, the model number, and any other information that's going to help us identify that device. Now, once we do that, we've got to determine the MR labeling from the device manufacturer. Remember that the manufacturer of the device is responsible for, for providing accurate MR labeling information. Now, if the labeling is MR unsafe, then that's pretty much it. Most facilities will stop at this point and the patient will not be allowed to undergo the MRI exam. But if the labeling is conditional, then we need to know two additional things. Number one, what are the conditions and can we provide those conditions? Here's an example. It's a letter I obtained from a client of mine that had requested MR labeling information from St. Jude about a particular heart valve. And as you can see, the conditions of use are static magnetic field of three Tesla or less, spatial gradient of 525 gauss per centimeters or less, maximum whole body averaged specific absorption rate, the SAR, of 2.0 watts per kilogram for 15 minutes of scanning. And remember, this 15 minutes of scanning, as you see worded here, means per sequence. It doesn't mean you have to stop scanning the patient after 15 minutes. This just means you can't do any series that lasts more than 15 minutes. And I'm pretty sure most people have no problem adhering to that particular condition of use. Now, as an aside, the conditions of use regarding the maximum spatial field gradient are often a cause for confusion in MRI facilities. Now, the SMRT and I produced a series of six MR safety videos in the last year or so, and they are available for SMRT members on the SMRT website. And one of those videos, if I re recall, addresses the maximum spatial field gradient as a condition of use. So if you are an SMRT member and you still have questions about that particular condition of use, I recommend you look at that video series. And if you're not an SMRT member, maybe that's a good reason to join. Now, what if you are not able to specifically identify an implant or device? What can you do to assess the risk, if any, to a patient who's got to go through or is requested to undergo an MRI exam. Well, this can be done by looking at any possible interactions with the three magnetic fields that a patient is going to be exposed to when they undergo an MRI exam. And those fields are the static field, the time varying or switched gradient magnetic fields, and the RF or B1 magnetic field. For exposure to the static field, the first thing we want to know is, is it metallic? And if it's metallic, is it ferromagnetic? Well, maybe we know, maybe we don't. There are possibly some ways we can determine that. But for the most part, we should assume it's ferromagnetic unless we can prove that it's not. Now, if it were to be ferromagnetic, is there any risk related to torque forces? Well, that would depend on its size and shape and its location in the magnet. Now, if it's ferromagnetic, is there any risk uh, should the item move? I mean, should it migrate? Should it change locations? This may depend on what it is, how it's held in place, and where it is. Uh, relative to its location in the body. For risk related to the switched magnetic field gradients, 
Again, it depends on if it is metallic. Remember that not all metal is ferromagnetic, but all metal is conductive. Therefore, is vibration a concern, you know, if it should occur? Because this can happen with conductive materials being exposed to these switched gradient magnetic fields. Many of you are probably familiar with patients uh, telling you or reporting that their, their wedding ring vibrates during the scan. It's not necessarily dangerous, but it could, depending on if it's an eye, if it's an implanter device, could it damage anything? Would it be uncomfortable? Now, if the item is a lead or a wire of some kind, would this present a problem if current were to be induced in that wire? And then you have to consider where is this item relative to the gradient coil? If it's in the middle of the coil, then it's going to be exposed to minimal gradient switching. But if it's close to or at the ends of the gradient coil, then it's going to be exposed to significant gradient switching. And then there is exposure to the B1 or the RF field. Again, with as with any other magnetic field considerations, is it metallic? Because if it is, then it is conductive. And remember, that's probably a given, even if it's not ferrous. So then would heating be of a concern? Well, that's going to depend on several things. For example, its location within the volume of the RF transmit coil, as well as its size, its shape, and its orientation. Now, remember, SMRT members have more access to additional information on the SMRT website, uh, other videos and other self-study materials. So, again, if you have any more detailed questions about this, please refer to that material that's available to SMRT members. The ACR guidance document states that final determination of whether or not to scan any given patient with any given implant, foreign body, so on, is to be made by the Level 2 MR personnel designated attending MR radiologist, MR medical director, or some specifically designated Level 2 MR personnel following certain criteria for acceptability that's been predetermined by the medical director. In other words, your medical director is responsible for setting up the policies and procedures for who can clear implants and devices and how this is to work. If you read the ACR guidance document here, this clearly, clearly excludes the referring physician. Referring physician implanting surgeon, the physician's nurse, a relative. These people are not reliable sources for accurate MR information, safety information, relative to implants or devices. So that brings us to the end of this fourth video in our SMRT safety video podcast series. We got one more to go, so be sure to look for that one. And we hope that you will use these safety video podcasts to take a look at your policies and procedures, your practices, and focus on improving your pol- your practices. Even if, even if you're doing a great job, we can always do better. Focus on improving that safety for your patients and your staff. So until next time, this is Bill Faulkner. Take care.